time, everybody. My lovely, lovely, lovely imps. Uh, today, we finally have to talk about Harry Potter Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, I have remained silent on this game for quite some time. Almost, oddly, uh, like, conspicuously quiet on this game. To the degree that people have been asking me for my opinions on Hogwarts Legacy in public and in private. And I've said next to nothing. Um, I had one very tiny rant about it a couple of days ago on my stream where I said it looks terrible to me. Uh, the gameplay looks embarrassingly bad. Uh, it looks like a crappy Arkham, Arkham, Batman, Arkham, whatever clone. Um, like it just, even stylistically, it just looked like they just used the same stuff. It just looked just like an Arkham game to me. And, um, and so I, I didn't really, uh, I didn't really talk about it a whole bunch. Um, but as I didn't talk about it, more and more and more people were talking about it. And it got to the point where, uh, <laughs> the worst point was last night where no matter whether I went to Discord, no matter whether I went to, uh, YouTube, no matter whether I went to Twitter, there was a Hogwarts Legacy thing everywhere on all platforms. I went to my Discord, Hogwarts Legacy. I went to my YouTube channel. I went to YouTube, Hogwarts Legacy videos. Like three or four Hogwarts Legacy videos had been fed to me. Um, I, I went on Twitter and every single time I refreshed, Hogwarts Legacy tweet. Hogwarts Legacy, Hogwarts Legacy, Hogwarts Legacy, Hogwarts Legacy, Hogwarts Legacy, Hogwarts Legacy, fucking Hogwarts Legacy! Wow! Harry Potter! I can't fucking believe it. Now, where do I even, I don't even know where to begin on this thing. Hogwarts Legacy, Hogwarts Legacy. Everybody talking about Hogwarts Legacy. Now, uh, some of you might know, I know this might come as a shock to some of you, but I am trans. I am a trans woman. I have been a trans woman for a very, 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 very long time. Uh, I transitioned long before I started streaming, um, and I'm very open and loud about my status as a trans person. Uh, I am engaged in, uh, in to some degree, uh, advocacy, of progressive politics online. Uh, I am a edutainer who regularly talks about politics. I talk about trans issues all the time. It's one of the biggest focuses of my channel. Uh, it has been since I started my channel. In fact, talking about trans issues has been one of the most important things to my channel, uh, to me personally, um, regardless of the era of my channel. Um, and that hasn't changed even a little. And so I'm sure some of you in chat are going, well then, surely you should have talked about Hogwarts Legacy. If you're really trans, then you should care about Hogwarts Legacy. Um, and the truth is that I don't give a fucking shit about Hogwarts Legacy. Like, I am actively repulsed by its name. I am absolutely actively repulsed by the concept of, of Hogwarts Legacy. The game um, looks terrible, like I mentioned before, uh, very briefly. The gameplay looks bad, the world looks boring and bland. Um, out of curiosity, like a month ago, I decided to go look up some gameplay previews because I was like, what's all the hubbub about? What's everybody talking about? Maybe this game is like a really big deal and that's why everybody's making such a big deal about it. And I proceeded to see the exact same gameplay clip copy pasted across dozens and dozens and dozens of channels. It's, uh, in fact, if I if I try to summarize this, this gameplay uh, loop from memory, many of you will know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? There's these little goblins going like this, and they're standing around at like a like an eight foot distance from the main character, whose arm is going like this, and uh, they're like 
They're like, Crucio, Crucio, Expelliarmus, Expelliarmus, Flipendo, 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 Wingardium Leviosa. Um, and they're, they're sort of doing this and there's these little sparks going everywhere and there's a big statue of what appears to be like a raven or something. And at some point during the video, one of the goblins that's hopping around in the background, they like shoot a little laser over at the big statue of the raven and then they go like this, they go like, huh, and it does like a little cinematic and the statue falls over and the goblin like ah, and gets crushed by the rocks from the statue, and they're like, and then it's like astounding, astounding gameplay, stunning, truly astounding. You can the the environment you can engage with the gaming environment, and I'm like, all right, guys, that's wow like environmental damage uh being able to hurt people with objects in the environment is like a thing that's been around since like the first video games that were ever made uh so to be honest uh basically every single person talking about hogwarts legacy for the last like three months to me has kind of looked like a giant soy like soy jack emoji okay like you know um you guys know what I'm talking about. The soy face, though. That thing. Um, I'm just kind of like, what? what is the... Why are people so excited outside of it being Harry Potter? And people are, of course, the answer is that it's Harry Potter. And... I remember liking Harry Potter a lot, okay? Like, I went to a midnight release for the final book of Harry Potter. Um, when I was a child... Uh, a literal actual child, like a young teenager, I was very excited about Harry Potter. Um, and Harry Potter uh, was extremely fun for me when I was a child. Um, and, uh, and it was cool because as a child, I found the world very interesting and fun and colorful. And it seemed to deal with a lot of like sort of teenager, young, young adult teenager issues. And I was very excited. Uh, I was filled with a form of childish glee. Um, and I had little replica, uh, little replica wands. In fact, somewhere here in my house, I still have my replica wands. Um, and, uh, I liked the books. Uh, I liked the games. I had little. We when I was a kid, we made costumes to dress up as Harry Potter characters. Um, we used to eat the berry, birdie bots, every flavored beans, and the chocolate frogs, and all of that stuff. And um, and uh, you know, it was Harry Potter. And uh, you know, obviously, since then, the Harry Potter series has undergone a number of uh, changes. So first of all. Uh, the normal Harry Potter series is all over. Uh, secondly, uh, the creator of Harry Potter, a woman named J.K. Rowling, uh, created this, like, in this, I'll call it interesting, this strange thing called the Potterverse, which is basically like a, a cinematic universe type thing, but for Harry Potter. But the Potterverse has, like, a website um, where she has written a bunch of, like, it, um, addendums and stuff like there's a bunch of random blog posts some of them most of them are written by her uh, or some of them are written by her some of them are not uh, all of them are supposed to be official um, and in these there's like little short stories and poems and pictures and little videos and and whatever blah 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 you know the type of stuff that you would expect from a cinematic universe it's a website you can go on there's a forum you can read fan fiction uh, etc yeah, and um, of course the third and arguably the most impactful thing uh, that has happened in the Harry Potter universe is the fact that in the years since Harry Potter's sort of prime, uh, J.K. Rowling has come out unequivocally as an anti-trans activist, activist. And when I say that she's an anti-trans activist, I mean it's like egregious. Uh, it's to the degree that like she spends a lot of her time online uh, intentionally targeting and going on like long sort of speeches and screeds about how trans people um, are like invading women's spaces, about how trans people are like a mafia that's trying to come for you and your kids. It's very dramatic, in fact. Um, 
it's uh, the way the the type of rhetoric that Jake that J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling. Did I say J.R. Rowling before? Whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, J.K. Rowling engages in is very extreme. And I'm not like, I'm not trying to be dramatic. I mean, I'm talking that, that not only has she been, she's been going to events that are like solely devoted to countering the trans menace. She has been uh, openly friendly to, she has openly and publicly praised. She has retweeted the works of, um, People who have said some of the most uh, like unhinged things you can imagine. I mean, she was associated with a number of the people who were involved in the group that quoted Mein Kampf at a rally against trans people. I'm not joking. That's not, that's a real thing that actually happened. Um, and there was no like denouncement from her. There's just, you know, just despite the fact that all of her associates were there, that it was an organization that she's been associated with. Um, it's really, really bad. Um, there's these, the like number of things that she's done to indicate her hostility towards trans people is incredibly, incredibly large now. In addition to actually like unironically promoting fundraising for groups that are anti-trans that are completely and utterly anti-trans they spread tra anti-trans misinformation they spread messages that say that trans people do things that they don't uh she is obsessed she is obsessed with trans people and um so that's of course the biggest thing that's happened in the harry potter universe uh uh you know since the heyday since what most people remember uh the the, the sort of like childlike bliss of the days that they childishly participated in the cartoon or in the uh, book series intended for children. Um, uh, so uh, uh, it's a pretty big deal, right? Now, um, that of course has stained the history of, of Hogwarts and the history of Harry Potter for a lot of people. Um, for me, I grew out quote unquote of Harry Potter. Uh, I don't really feel any need to consistently revisit the Harry Potter universe or whatever. Uh, like five years ago, I think I read one or two of the, I listened to one or two of the books on audiobook while I was like uh, exercising and stuff. Um, but I don't know. I don't, I don't find like a whole lot of personally, I don't find a whole lot of like draw back to the, uh, back to the universe or whatever. Um, uh, but, um, I don't know. Um, but this game that just came out is a game called Hogwarts Legacy, and it has caused, it has caused a complete, uh, a, a, like, like a, like a stroke on social media. Um, it, it won't go away. It wouldn't, it wouldn't go away. Everybody was talking about it for fucking weeks and it won't stop. And I want to talk about this, that aspect a bit, now that I've kind of given you all the rundown and explained my history with it and explained why for people who might be watching my show who don't know all this already, you know, why people got mad at JK Rowling in the first place. So uh, I don't remember how long ago, but some time ago, uh, this game Hogwarts Legacy was announced and um, it was kind of considered to be a big deal because it's the first like Harry Potter game in a long time that wasn't like a Lego game because there was a bunch of those Lego Harry Potter games and Lego Hogwarts and Lego Dumbledore and Lego Snivellius Snump and whatever other silly names this series has for all of its characters. Um, which, I mean, we could get into that. I already did like a funny video like like two months ago where I talked about like the, the, the like extremely questionable creative decisions that went into certain aspects in the, in the series. Like, I mean, okay, like the example that everybody goes to is there's a character in Harry Potter, all of you guys who are here probably know this, but I don't care, I'm gonna say it again. In Harry Potter, there is a character whose name is Kingsley Shacklebolt. And he is the only uh, black, like, uh, ministry, ministry of magic character. He's a pretty major character. Um, and he's a black guy. And his name is Kingsley Shacklebolt. Uh, he's not the only black wizard, but he's the only 
uh, he's like the only major character who's in any sort of position of power. Because as I understand it, there's like two uh, kids at Hogwarts who have like nor like normal, not uh, Harry Potter names. Um, but yeah, Kingsley Shacklebolt, the African uh, uh, wizard. And it, it's, there's a lot of things like that, okay? There's just, there's a lot of shit like that in Harry Potter that, that irks people and that makes it awkward and that makes all the naming conventions really, really fucking awkward, okay? Um, yeah, it's just, people were bringing up Cho Chang, uh, like the most prominent Asian character is named Cho Chang, and it's, it's like a, it's a, like a nonsense name, basically, it's a name that it takes one name from, from Korean and one name from Chinese, um, but she's supposed to be, uh, I think she's supposed to be Korean, but I don't think they ever give a shit about that, they're just like, oh, yeah, she's from Korea or some shit. Um, it, it's, it's, it's bad. Um, oh yeah, yeah, of course, yes. Uh, Baphomet brings up the only known Jewish character is a character whose name is Anthony Goldstein. And, uh, he only exists because, uh, somebody asked, uh, JK Rowling and she tweeted out like off the cuff. Yeah, his, some, uh, the first Jewish wizard was, uh, Anthony Goldstein, which doesn't even make any sense. And of course, uh, there's a million things I could talk about. These are just the funny little naming things that people get irritated at. Um, Mind, Mind X E Mag says, oh my God, who cares? It's fiction, it's fake, it's not real. Like, why are you people so butthurt? Are you, have you been paying attention at all? Have you been listening to anything I've been saying, like at all? Are you, uh, are you, okay. Let's, let's move on from that. Um, I know they weren't listening to everything that I said about how I don't really give a shit about Harry Potter and how uh, I'm outlining the things that people have talked about. I don't care. Uh, there are so many stupid things in fiction that I that you can get mad at. Like, I mean, I make fun of stuff in fiction all the time that's super weird and problematic and whatever, but yeah, whatever. Just cry over everything, wah, wah, wah. Woke is destroying this world. <sighs> okay. Um, Harry Potter is like rotting people's brains in real time. And I mean this like all across the board, okay? Um, as you can see by the type of people uh, who who have come into um, into my chat, um, if you uh, I, I didn't even mention it because I have all my alerts turned off right now, but I have been raided by two separate anti-trans or not raided. Sorry, I have I have had two separate fake accounts come in that were anti-trans. Both of them had a anti-trans joke in the name. They were made. Uh, literally seconds before showing up in my chat. Uh, I wonder why that would be the case. Maybe because I put Hogwarts Legacy uh, trans in my title. Maybe they decided to just come in and make, you know, say little, like have little funny slurs as their name and shit, you know. I don't know. Uh, to me, it sounds a whole lot like there are a lot more people uh, on the, the sort of anti-woke side who are being gigantic crybaby, snowflake, man-baby losers about all of this. Because um, keep in mind, let's just keep this all in perspective. Before I go off on uh, my full conversation about all this stuff, let's just recall that uh, enormous channels like Geeks and Gaming, uh, enormous channels like The Quartering, as pathetic as that guy's show is, have been screeching, go woke, go broke, every single time there's so much as a female actor in a film. Um, uh, uh, sorry, I should be more specific. A female actor in their man baby films, they don't actually watch anything other than like Marvel and DC Cinematic Universe films and Harry Potter and um, I don't know, what else? Uh, what other like man baby things are out there? Basically, if it's like some nostalgia baiting fucking drivel, uh, you can be sure that 900,000 um, or more actually, unfortunately, uh, of these, these pathetic like right-wing anti-woke channels will cry for literal years about it. I mean, uh, like it's it 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 it's beyond belief. 
it beggars belief, honestly. But let's talk about Hogwarts Legacy, because I've been sort of rambling all over the place here talking about the wind up to Hogwarts Legacy. So uh, Hogwarts Legacy, um, oh, how do I even start with this? There is a boycott against Hogwarts Legacy. Um, there is a there is a a, a boycott that ha or an attempted boycott I should say, uh, I mean no it's a boycott. Pe a lot of people got on board with it. A number of streamers got on board and said they're not going to stream it. They're not going to talk about it on stream. They're not going to do this. They're not going to do that. And uh, of course it became a major talking point to the degree that of course like uh, all of the anti woke people were freaking out that some people said that they think that you shouldn't play this game. Um, to news articles being written about the boycott, to news articles asking whether they think it's appropriate to play a game, a game that is, uh, you know, sort of strongly associated with uh, a known transphobe, JK Rowling. And I want to be clear, no, there is no ifs, ands, or buts about the fact that JK Rowling is a transphobe. Like, uh, there is just a preponderance of, of direct, blatant evidence of this, in addition to her palling around with people who go significantly further than her without any sort of denouncement. Um, JK Rowling does not like trans people. It's very, very obvious. Um, um, so, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, she literally wrote an essay about it. It's, it's like, it's, it's out of control. Like this, there's no doubts about that part of it. Okay. So there's a lot of people who've been asking the question, is it appropriate for me to play, uh, or for people to play in general, a game made by, you know, that is sort of like the obvious intellectual property of JK Rowling. And I think that's an interesting question. And I would like to go through that a little bit on this stream. Um, because I wanna talk about uh, the efficacy of boycotts. I wanna talk about the inefficacy of boycotts. I wanna talk about uh, problematic art uh, in general. Um, now, when most people talk about problematic art, uh, they are usually talking not about like baby children's cartoons um, that uh, that are made by someone who is a heinous bigot, of which there are surprisingly uh, a number of, of ones like that, but usually they are talking about high art, okay? They are talking about literature or they are talking about films. An example that comes to mind immediately is uh, is uh, 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 Stanley Kub Kubrick. Stanley C Kubrick, Kubrick. I don't know actually what the correct pronunciation um, of that is. Uh, Stanley Kubrick, uh, uh, often regarded to be one of the greatest filmmakers in American history. Um, right, he was American, right? Or was he British? I always forget. Okay, so regardless, his films <laughs> were mostly made here in America. I better double check on that. Is he British? Okay, no, he was American. All right, thank goodness. Whew. Yeah, anyway, regardless, globally considered to be one of the greatest uh, filmmakers uh, in the world. Um, and an, ab an extremely abusive person by all reports, okay? To the degree that Stanley Kubrick was, was like well known, he was actually like praised for how abusive he was to his his uh, actors mostly, but uh, people didn't really talk as frequently about how abusive he was to crew. Um, there were like openly acknowledged and openly discussed examples of him making actors break down on set. Uh, he was notorious for making uh, people stay on set for hours after the call time. Um, uh, like he would literally, he would run, he would take hundreds and hundreds of takes sometime, sometimes of his scenes uh, because he was such a, such a perfectionist in his own mind that he would demand his actors do it over and over and over and over and over again to a level of repetition that would just break them. They would be ex physically and mentally exhausted. Uh, people in chat are pointing out that it was Stanley Kubrick's fault that Shelley Duvall stopped ask acting altogether. Like Shelley Duvall is an incredibly talented actress. Um, and uh, if you've noticed, she hasn't really been in anything 
for a, since she acted pretty much anything since she acted under Sta uh, Stanley Kubrick. And part of the reason for that was because he was so abusive and so verbally abusive on sets. Um, which is usually what people are talking about when they talk about problematic art. They're talking about art that is difficult to enjoy because you know the conditions that it was made under or you know that the people involved with it are themselves uh, uh, morally, like severely morally compromised. Um, there were of course many, many other examples that you could go through. Um, and I have seen for the, uh, uh, for the, for the record, I have seen a lot of films, most of Stanley Kubrick's filmography I have seen, and I think that most of Stanley Kubrick's films are phenomenal works of art. Um, I don't know that they're as good as some people make them out to be. Some people literally treat them like they are um, the most important like film that films that have ever been made, and I don't. I just I don't believe there's such a thing as like the most important piece of film that's ever been made. What I'm trying to say is that there is a lot of really fantastic art that is made or associated with really, really bad people. Um, and sometimes it is known that those people are bad in real time, um, like while they're still making art. When, when that's the case, when somebody is still alive and they are, and they are making art and, they are, and that art is like, actively being reflected by their actions, the discussion of like boycotts or protests to avoid that person's art often comes up. Uh, for a smaller example, an example of something that uh, is a really small form of art, think about, uh, does anybody remember JonTron? Um, uh, JonTron, uh, he was a YouTuber who was most famous for being involved in the absolutely legendary YouTube channel, Game Grumps. Uh, John Tron went on a racist rant on a stream uh, and, and ended up getting in a debate about racism where he said a lot of just blatantly racist things about black people. Um, and while it did not immediately destroy his career, it permanently changed the trajectory of his career. Uh, his channel is significantly smaller uh, uh, than it could have been. He is no longer associated with the channel Game Grumps. The channel Game Grumps, which went on to become a world famous international brand, like Game Grumps is still going very strong. Um, and uh, a lot of people found that they couldn't enjoy JonTron's work anymore once they realized like just how racist he was. Um, and I think that I can sympathize with that like a lot. Um, despite the fact that I am, I am a proponent of consuming problematic art. Like I think that it is an, it is an okay and a good thing to sit with yourself and, and, and analyze and take in a problematic piece of art. Um, I can understand why you wouldn't want to do, you wouldn't want to do that with every single piece of problematic art. And I can also understand why you might not enjoy that experience more so. Even though I think it can be very valuable to consume and, and reflect on problematic art, um, I, I also can understand why you might not like that experience or why it not be, or, or why it might not be a pleasant experience, especially, and I think this is especially true, when that media is uh, associated with a lot of positivity, um, like say a comedy show or, uh, uh, or a, uh, an influencer or a life brand or something along those lines. Let's talk about the facts real quick about this Harry Potter Hogwarts Legacy game, okay? Harry Potter Hogwarts Legacy is a game that was, uh, is produced by WB Studios, okay? Right, am I, am I, am I wrong about that? Let me just make sure I get all of this correct. It's published by WB, sorry. That's what I meant to say. The developer was Avalanche and it was published by WB, Warner Bros. Games. Now, some of you might point out that Warner Bros. Games has a, a pretty controversial history in and of themselves. After all, Warner Bros. was responsible for a number of, uh, let's just call them 
uh, live service debacles, okay? Um, Warner Brothers uh, produced a series of games based on very, very popular uh, series, uh, which were accused uh, variously, and I'm not gonna, I, I'm not gonna go through every single game, of being um, abusive, in their monetization practices, manipulative in their monetization practices. Uh, one of the games includes a the true ending of the game is locked behind a ten, an additional 10 hours of grinding. So if you want to see the end of the game, you either have to grind for 10 hours or you can pay for their experience boosts which lets you get through the grind in a matter of one or, or two or three hours as opposed to 10, um, which many people would point out seems like a very abusive thing to do. It seems like it would be, it is manipulative to the players of that game, to the genuine fans of that game, to lock content, the true ending of a game, that you, you know, the intended ending of a game, not behind a challenge necessarily, but behind a extremely long time sink that you can pay extra money to skip. That's pretty bad. But on top of that, it wasn't just that. There were loot boxes involved in these games. There were, um, there was a lot of, uh, content, like, uh, like, like, uh, uh, um, What's the word I'm looking for? I'm blanking on the word right now. Uh, aesthetic content, that's not the right word, but whatever. Uh, 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 aesthetic content, skins, characters, uh, stuff like that that was locked behind uh, more money. So a game costs $60 at the front. You have to pay $60 up front and then you have to cosmetics. Thank you. Why couldn't I think of that word? Cosmetics. So you not only have a situation where these games are charging you money to skip the game, um, but are also uh, charging you money to actually enjoy the full experience of the game. Games are a visual medium. Uh, when you gate cosmetics behind additional money, especially in a game that already costs $60, that can be really problematic. And of course, Hogwarts Legacy is not just made by WB Games, which has this sort of problematic uh, and highly, highly uh, critiqued history of of um, uh, 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 with monetization, but also is associated with a an IP that is owned by and still operated by J.K. Rowling, a renowned uh, trans exclusionary uh, so called feminist, which gets a lot of people bothered, and I think that it's understandable that people would feel some hesitance towards that sort of game. Like a lot of hesitance. I can also imagine that people would want to avoid the game outright. I'm not gonna play a game that I think is uh, is going to, I've gone on rants on this channel in fact many times about how I think people should stop playing games that have manipulative monetization schemes. Uh, I am very against manipulative monetization schemes. In fact, I think that they are predatory. Uh, when I say like that, that I think that they're predatory, just consider the fact that loot boxes, a gambling mechanic, a mechanic that is explicitly, if you go and watch the people who designed the loot box uh, mechanics, if you go watch them talk at conventions, you can go watch their speeches online. They talk about how they are intended to get people coming back to the game. They won't use the word addiction, but they explain the mechanics of addiction. And these are marketed at children. Addicting gambling mechanics being marketed at children uh, so that you will spend money on a digital thing that that doesn't even exist in physical form to me is very ethically questionable. I think it's bad, in fact. Um, so I avoid those games, like the plague, and I actually tell other people I think you should avoid them too. Um, and and then if you add on top of that the fact that the the Harry Potter brand is heavily associated with this this anti-trans original creator, J.K. Rowling, I think it becomes pretty clear as to why a lot of people would not just uh, uh, want to avoid the game themselves, but also would advise other people to avoid the game. But it kind of goes a little further than that, doesn't it? Because uh, it's not just people saying, hey, 
maybe you shouldn't play the game. Hey, you should know this game is here. We've reached a point of the discourse where there is a pretty significant uh, push and counter push over the game Hogwarts Legacy. Um, like I said before, it drives me, it's been driving me fucking insane uh, to log on and see people screaming about it in every single direction you can imagine about the same game that I don't give a shit about. And it seems completely impossible to avoid any discourse about the game. Um, and the reason for that is because of this boycott of a call. Sorry, <laughs> I should be clear. The reason for this, uh, that it became so high is because of a boycott and because of the response to the boycott. Now, when the boycott started, it was not a particularly large push, but no real movement really is. It began to garner steam with a couple of major figures sort of coming out against the game. Um, there have been uh, 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 a number of, of, of prominent uh, trans and not trans content creators who have basically said, don't buy the game. Do not buy this game because it is a game that is made by a transphobic person. And a lot of them cite a, uh, a tweet by JK Rowling. There is a, a sort of infamous tweet from JK Rowling uh, where she basically says, uh, I'm not changing anything because people still love my series. It doesn't matter, you call me a transphobe, but nobody seems to care, which is a very silly thing to even say, but many people pointed to the fact that JK Rowling said that publicly and sort of used it as evidence to say, we should stick it to JK Rowling. Uh, J.K. Rowling says that her opinions uh, uh, don't matter because her, her, her creation is still popular because Harry Potter is still popular. And a lot of people said that's fucking bullshit. Let's change that. Um, yeah, if anybody has the actual link to that tweet, if anybody has that tweet, please drop it in chat because I would love to actually show it on screen. I didn't grab it because I didn't even think about it, but if you see that one, just uh, show me that one, okay? So of course the usual sp suspects sort of came out. The moment that people started making a call to sort of like actively boycott this game, to not buy it, to not play it, to give it the, the cold shoulder in the public sphere, um, all of the whiny conservative snowflakes were like, ah! and they started crying about it. Here it is, this is the one. Yes, thank you very much, Goblin Mode. I appreciate that. This is the one. How do you sleep at night knowing you've lost a whole audience from buying your books? And of course, I read my most recent royalty checks and I find that the pain goes away pretty quickly. So, yeah. So it's pretty blatant. Uh, like she's basically saying, well, I make lots of money, so fuck you. Um, which is a pretty fucking shitty response to people expressing uh, genuine distaste to your transphobic uh, positions. Um, you know? Uh, uh, uh. So, uh, yeah, so there's, there's the actual tweet so you can see it with your own eyes. And I think it's gotten, like, out of hand in almost every single way. So... A lot of people have been talking about the uh, uh, extremely aggressive rhetoric of supposed uh, anti-Harry Potter people, like, you know, people who were, th who were the boycotters. There has been a, a slew of news articles, there's been a million and a half YouTube videos uh, complaining about the toxicity of people saying things like, and I'm gonna give some examples, things like, you are not a trans ally if you play Hogwarts. Uh, people saying things like, if you play Hogwarts, you are just proving that you don't give a shit about trans people. Uh, there have been even more toxic examples. You know, people have said that they've been told to kill themselves. People have been told that, uh, have, been, have said that they've had all kinds of crazy things said to them about the Hogwarts legacy game. Uh, which uh, is silly when that occurs, uh, for sure. Like, no ifs, ands, like, that is 
just really a toxic and ineffective thing to do. But once again, I find myself needing to remind everyone that you are on the fucking internet, okay? Did you know? Watch, in fact, watch this. I can do it right now. Are you guys ready? Are you guys fucking ready for this? Look at what I can do right now. Are you guys, I'm gonna demonstrate. Twitter.com. Oh, create account, name. Uh, trans girl, ooh, woo, uh, uh, forever, n a hashtag, no potter. Okay. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? I don't think I want to do, I don't think I want to do this. I'm going to name myself MAGA Patriot, uh, 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 1886. Or wait, 1776, 1886 is the wrong year. 1776, uh, uh, lone wolf, uh, American flag. How do I do that one? Oh, I can't do the American flag. There we go, lone wolf, America. Okay, and oh, here, I'll put his sunglasses in here. Now, obviously I'm not actually gonna go through with this. But I want to point out the fact that on the internet, you never know if you are talking to a literal child, a bot, or a troll. And people need to keep that in mind at all times. Um, because when somebody tells you uh, that uh, if you play the Harry Potter game, that you are going, that you are like, that you should die, there is a 50-50 chance that that person is a child, and then the other chance is that they are a uh, adult who is intentionally trying to ironically pretend that they are a trans person on the internet, okay? However, I will say that I saw some very odd arguments out there, and I saw some pretty extreme and obnoxious arguments out there. For example, I saw a journalist, a blue check journalist with a, with, uh, I don't recall their exact follower count, but we're talking tens of thousands of followers. And I saw them tweet the following. I'm going to, I'm going to just tell you exactly what they tweeted, which is every single purchase of Hogwarts legacy is another trans death. And I gotta be completely honest. That is a fucking stupid thing to say. That is a phenomenally stupid thing to say. Um, and that person doesn't really have the po the the deniability of being a nobody anonymous account. They said that on their own profile, at least as far as I could tell. It could have been a extreme, you know, it could have been a heavily uh, faked troll. Maybe they purchased a blue check and maybe they purchased 10,000 followers. That is still a possibility, but I'm going to be charitable and say that person probably was being serious. Um, I have also seen um, an unbelievable amount of videos, uh, like I'm talking a a feed clogging amount of videos uh, talking about how uh, uh, you need to be you need to be willing to not play Hogwarts Legacy. You need to be willing to participate in the boycott of Hogwarts Legacy, uh, or else it proves that you don't really care about trans people. And I I think that that is also a bullshit argument. And I want to be really clear about that. I don't think that's true. For the same reason uh, that I don't think that most consumptive de decisions uh, make you a bad person. We live in a society. <laughs> we live in a society uh, where basically every single consumptive decision that we make is highly problematic. Have you bought Nutter Butters or Oreos recently? Congratulations, you contributed to Nabisco. You contributed to a company which is owned uh, by one of the most evil mega conglomerates in the world, which is currently under fire, under fire actively for employing child slaves overseas. Uh, have you ever eaten or purchased a Hershey's chocolate? 
Congratulations. The Mars Company, which creates Hershey's chocolate, I believe, whatever. Uh, the, 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 hold on, let me be sure about that. Is Hershey's its own company? Oh, no, never mind. I don't have to worry about this at all. Uh, as of as of last year, Mars, Nestle, and Hershey were all being investigated currently and sued by the U.S. government for child slavery. So, uh, never mind. It doesn't matter. Hershey's, Nestle, uh, Mars, you bought M&M's, you bought fucking Hershey's, you bought Oreos, you've supported a company that is actively using child slave child slavery. Okay? So I don't find consumptive arguments, like arguments saying like, if you buy or, or use this product, uh, uh, particularly convincing. We live in a consumerist society and extricating ourselves from that is a very, very difficult process. Uh, it is one that I talk about in great depth on my channel at various points, how we can move away from being uh, consumptive minded people. Um, Oh yeah, yeah, Eddie, Eddie points out the Nestle CEO is on record, on fucking record saying that water is not a human right. This is the types of people that you support when you purchase Oreo cookies, when you pr purchase ice cream, uh, Oreo flavored ice cream. Um, it is a huge problem and it is not easily solved uh, by stopping one one product over another. People buy and consume problematic pro pro products at every single turn. If you're watching my stream right now, chances are, with all in all likelihood, an overwhelming likelihood, you are watching this uh, on a device that had cobalt or lithium that was mined by by slaves, by child slaves often, who were uh, subject to conditions that include beatings, torture, and rape. And that's if you're watching my stream right now, which if you're watching, I don't, I can't call you out if you're not watching my stream right now. But if you are, if you got a fucking iPhone, if you got, you know, any of that shit, And that's not to say that, that nothing that we do is worthwhile. It's just to say that it's actually really, really, really difficult to disentangle ourselves from consumption. Our whole lives. Uh, I've used the phrase before that, that most of us were literally not even born when this particular cage was built. We were born in this cage. We were born into a society that is entirely built around consumption. And it is bad, and it's been bad, and people have been trying to figure out how to solve that for a very long time, but it's not a very easy thing. And that's not to say that I don't think that any boycott can be successful, because I do think that some boycotts can be successful. Um, and that's not to say that I don't think that it's worthwhile to ask people, is it really worth purchasing this product? Um, but I think that it, you test, you, you start to push the plausibility and believability of your arguments when you start saying things like, if you did, if you play Hogwarts Legacy, or if you buy Hogwarts Legacy, you are not an ally to the trans community. And, um, I have seen a lot of people saying that. I have seen this personally with my own eyes. I have seen per people that I know in real life saying this. I have been. I have seen content creators that I have followed for a very long time making this exact argument, um, and I think it's a bad argument. However, I have also seen um, some of the most heinous responses to this shit. Some of the most pathetic and embarrassing and stupid uh, responses to the boycott that's possibly imaginable. Um, <laughs> guys, um, I have seen, uh, like not just from conservatives either, that's the stupidest part. I can't even say that this is contained to conservatives. I have seen people going on in like screaming rants, um, arguing, uh, uh, 
arguing that that like uh uh that 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 people who are mad about Harry Potter are as bad as the Nazis. That like they are they are reverse Nazis basically. That is an argument I have seen going around lately. That is an argument that I have seen going around a lot lately. I have seen uh some of the most ridiculous rhetoric of people being like uh, oh my god, of course there's the conservatives. Did anybody see a uh, fucking uh, uh, alt-right Gamergate washout Carl Benjamin, a.k.a. Sargon of Akkad, saying, uh, there are two types of people in the world. There are people with swag who play Hogwarts Legacy, and there are people without swag who don't play Hogwarts Legacy. Like, just pretending that as, like, a 50-year-old man that you give a shit about Hogwarts Legacy because it's a culture war issue. This shit is embarrassing. It is so motherfucking pathetic. The entire conversation is so fucking pathetic. And what's worse is that I see it bringing out the worst in literally every single faction. Over a stupid, wasteful video game that is going to be forgotten in a year's time. Like... No one is going, like, nobody gives a shit uh, about this game. Not really. Not actually. What they all care about is something, is what this game represents. There is a large faction of people who say that this game represents a test of character, where if you are willing to, to abstain from playing this game, it proves that you're serious about, about willing, being willing to support trans people. There are people who see this game as representative of your willingness to support anti-trans people. It is a gigantic global social media virtue signal on every single fucking side of this goddamn thing. You know I haven't heard a single fucking person. The, the game's out now. People have been playing the game and I haven't heard a single fucking person talk positively or negatively about the gameplay, about the storyline of the game, about the characters in the game, about anything that's actually in the game whatsoever. The politics of the game haven't even been talked about. I've seen one, sorry, I should take it back. I've seen one thread talking about uh, anti-Semitism in the game, which, hey, that's a step in the right direction. At least it's about something that's actually in the fucking game. It is just every single fucking a uh, cultural mouthpiece on the planet talking about the meta conversation around the game. A meta conversation which is currently being propagated even by me because people keep fucking annoying me about it. So I decided to do this sort of long-winded discussion about it because Jesus fucking Christ, guys. There's like, I don't, there's nobody you can even yell at. I think it's just a symptom of a diseased culture. That we have a, a genuine, like, like when I look at American culture, when I look at, like, English-speaking pop culture, I see, it looks like Kaled. You know, you know from, uh, hold on, let me show it up on the screen, because I'm sure there's a ton of people, a ton of people who didn't fucking play Elden Ring, which is a significantly more awesome piece of media. Uh, let me see if I can find the, uh, the good image of, 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 of Kaled. There you go. Oh, God damn it. That's not a high quality image at all. There you go. The fucking diseased area in, in, in Elden Ring where all the like pustules and puke and blood and rotten flesh and everything is rotten and the scarlet rot is. Blood and pus land. This is what it looks like. That is what the cultural, like, the cultural zeitgeist looks like to me. It is just, nobody has anything. It is just misery and bile and toxicity. And I gotta say, some pretty crappy outcomes are coming out of this. Because uh, there are a bunch of, of content, trans content creators who uh, 
who are really getting harassed over this. And I mean like really, really, really bad. And uh, when I say like they're getting harassed on this, I mean like this has been used as a bludgeon to harass the absolute shit out of a lot of trans content creators um, who eat regardless of whether they supported or didn't support the boycott uh, uh, have, have not done anything that deserves harassment. Even people who didn't make good arguments in favor of the boycott do not deserve to be fucking harassed. They don't deserve to be piled on. They don't deserve to be told to be have fucking transphobic slurs screamed at them, to have them be uh, attacked based on their identity. It's fucked up. Crystal says people have been harassing Keffels nonstop on Twitter's because she did a meme stream title that implied that she was playing the game. I saw that. I saw people, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. This is the mental disease that I'm talking about. Keffels didn't even play the game. Keffels made a joke title, and people literally didn't bother clicking. They just they lit. It was. It's the most obvious joke. Like, uh, it's like a. It's like a. It's like wearing an "I'm with stupid" T-shirt. And people have freaked out about it. it. It's so frustrating to me. And like, I, I sat here last night uh, thinking about this because I was, you know, I always, you know, I always think about the stuff I'm going to talk about on stream for, you know, a long time. And, and so last night I was sitting here and I was watching some other people's content about it. And I've seen some pretty fucking frustrating shit. I've seen some... <sighs> People are just treating each other like shit for no reason over this shit. And this is one of the things that's so frustrating about this Hogwarts legacy garbage uh, in general, which is that it's a fucking trash ass WB Harry Potter game. Who fucking cares? Why are people burning bridges? Why the fuck are people actually ruining their relationships with other people over this fucking game? People are fucking, like, straight up uh, having fallouts over this. Is it fucking worth it? A lot of people have said that the boycott didn't succeed. That the boycott failed. And I don't know how you would measure that. I think that's actually kind of hard. Um, the boycott, uh, I don't believe that the boycott... Uh, like really managed to damage the sales of the game at all. Um, but I don't know if that was necessarily the main uh, the main focus of the boycott. Um, because boycotts can't always succeed in like killing a project a product overnight, but boycotts can generate uh, a lot of negative PR. So did a, did the boycott succeed? in uh in in damaging the sales of of uh of uh, hogwarts legacy no i don't think it did but keep in mind that hogwarts legacy is one of the most popular or sorry i should say harry potter is one of the most popular young adult uh book series of all time I, it's like one of the most translated book series of all time into all across the world. Like, it's like behind the Bible. There's not many other books that have been translated into as many languages as the Harry Potter series. The Harry Potter series had an incredible uh, cultural effect in its original, like, in its original form. Obviously, that is tapered massively, but even with the taper, uh, it's understandable that a game... Uh, like a, a major release of a game that's based on the Harry Potter universe is going to sell well and is going to do well. I don't think anybody really believed that the Harry Potter Hogwarts Legacy boycott was going to like kill the franchise. However, it did succeed in generating an incredible amount of negative, um, uh, 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 of, of negative, uh, uh, what's the word? Press, negative press. Take a look at this. I'm gonna just live Google Hogwarts Legacy. And if you go in here, uh, 
there is all the reviews. But if you go through the news and you just scroll through it, NPR one day ago, a treat for Potter fans shaded by controversy. Uh, here's some guides. Hogwarts Legacy is missing this. 12 things I missed that I, uh, I, I missed. Hogwarts Legacy can't, ca the New York Times, Hogwarts Legacy can't cast aside the debate over JK Rowling. Hogwarts Legacy dev boycotts own game over JK Rowling co trans controversy. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy amid JK Rowling controversy. This is from Forbes. Hogwarts Legacy drops amid online debate. So actually, despite the fact that the game's sale, the sales were fine, it actually did, the boycott actually did manage to generate an incredible amount of negative press for the game. And it got people thinking about uh, whether or not, uh, uh, got, it got people uh, you know, asking the question, is this game tainted by its creator? Is it, interestingly, is the legacy of Hogwarts Legacy tainted? So on one hand, yes, it is fair to say that the boycott did not succeed in negatively impacting the sales of Hogwarts Legacy. However, it is now a matter of public record that there is a sizable number of people who are very angry about the legacy of J.K. Rowling and her uh, her sort of extremely aggressive anti-trans politics. And I don't think that should be discounted. Um, I don't think that should be discounted at all. And in fact, I think people who are discounting that are doing themselves a disservice to their political analysis. Um, because that is a real effect. It's a, a genuine real effect to, to make, make it so that when you search the name on Google, on a blind Google search, uh, a bunch of things about controversy come up. And then people go and read about the controversy. And maybe they ask themselves some questions about it. I think people need to be serious about that. I think that a lot of you in the audience who are very anti-boycott should take some time to think about that effect. And I say this as somebody who doesn't generally think that boycotts are very effective. And I'm about to talk about that aspect of it. Um, because it's something that I've been thinking about. Uh, uh, is, okay, so if it generates a lot of bad press for the game, um, is that a success for a boycott? Because I, I think it might be. I think it's fair to say that's a form of success. Arius says, I don't think the average person who sees negative press would really care about it though. It's just people's opinions and it wouldn't affect their buying of the game. I think that's short-sighted. Um, not to be like, not trying to be rude to you or anything, but I think that's short-sighted. After all, it is uh, popularity and public opinion that got Harry Potter to the place that it is in the first place. It had a stunning positive reputation. In fact, uh, arguably, until J.K. Rowling started being a turf, people basically uh, completely ignored the negative aspects of Harry Potter because they loved the series so much. There's a lot of, of criticism of Harry Potter that was basically ignored uh, um, just because people felt so strongly about it. And now there's another aspect I have to talk about, which is the backlash, okay? Because uh, the backlash is um, really severe. As I mentioned, trans content creators are getting absolutely dogpiled to shit, especially trans content creators that supported the boycott. Um, and when I say like getting dogpiled to shit, you, you, you in the audience, you sitting there comfortably at your computer or at your TV screen, you don't know what it's like. You have no idea what it's like to have, uh, dozens, hundreds, thousands of people screaming at you. Um, I am a very, a fairly small creator, all things considered. Um, and I have dealt with deluges of harassment that are 
so fucking agonizing to deal with that they genuinely make me not want to make what I do. And they, ma they make me not want to do what I do anymore. Um, unless you've had to deal with that level of harassment. And I'm not just talking about getting roasted for a tweet. I'm talking about people uh, posting your video on hate forums and your comments getting flooded with uh, comments of people telling you to kill yourself. Um, the backlash has been severe. And in fact, um, hell, hold on. Let me see if I can show you this. Uh, I had somebody send me a screenshot uh, the other day of the, uh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Let's just, uh, let me just bring this up real quick. I'll show you what I'm talking about, okay? Let's take a look at this. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, oops, here we go. Let me just show you this real quick. Why does Serona sound like a dude? This discussion is weird as fuck. Uh, women are not real these days. Oh, this is the same one. Sorry, I got the same one twice. Dear women, and of course, this one right here, I looked at this one, and this one is a fucking transphobic rant about how uh, how trans women are not women. Um, uh, 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 if you hate transgenders, click here, etc. There were literally pages of anti-trans things being posted. That was those were those ones were just from the first three pages. Okay, the first the the top they were in the top three pages of discussions on Steam. Don't go on the Steam forums; it's always shit there. Yeah, it's always shit on Steam forums, but it's never that type of shit. That is very very direct. Uh, people just going and posting hate screeds in the comments of a Harry Potter game. That is the backlash that people have been talking about. And for the record. I do think that there has been some backlash that has been made worse because uh, uh, because there is some level of ammunition being given uh, to these bad actors, you know? Um, like, for example, if you go out there and you say, like that one journalist I mentioned before, that one journalist who said, every copy of Trans Legacy is another dead trans person, um, that is basically giving ammunition to your opponents. It is an incredibly stupid and bad thing to say. Uh, it is not justifiable. It is insulting to trans people. It is insulting to the work that activists are doing trying to fight against the very, very real persecution of trans people. And another thing that I think that needs to be pointed out. There's another aspect to this that I think needs to be discussed, and this is perhaps the most important of them all, um, which is that it's wasting valuable time. I have seen nearly every single uh, lefty content creator talking about Hogwarts Legacy a lot, and this now includes me, by the way. Now, to be fair, I did not talk about it before its release, I did not waste any time, and in fact, while people were arguing and bickering back and forth about Hogwarts Legacy, I was talking about the uh, uh, the fact that Donald Trump gave a anti-trans speech that was so fucking heinous and violent uh, uh, that I could barely believe that it was aired on television. But a lot of people have been spending their time on this issue. A lot of people in the midst of a very, very real uh, att a fucking attempt at genociding trans people in the United States and in the, U Uni and the United Kingdom. Both of these countries are heavily persecuting trans people. In America, there have been a slew of bills specifically banning medically necessary health care for trans kids and a tiny popu slice of the population is being targeted on the highest levels of government for persecution and hogwarts legacy is what people are talking about hogwarts legacy is the front of the culture war hogwarts fucking legacy the fucking uh, shitty terrible ass fucking arkham clone video game That's it? And 
I wish I could just blame liberals for this one, but it hasn't just been liberals. It hasn't just been liberals. It's not just liberals engaging in po politics as, or consumption as politics. It's been so many fucking people, lefties included, have been spending their time acting as though Hogwarts legacy is the be all end all of this fucking culture struggle. And I find that so depressing. And what's worse is that there are people who are responding to the, the boycott who believe it to be have been a failure and are using that as a justification to, to target and freak out on people who supported the boycott. It's just, it's a never ending Ouroboros of time wasting. It is a never ending Ouroboros of pointless verbal abuse thrown at one another. And I'm not against talking about media. I talk, I love art. I fucking, art is the reason that I live, okay? But Hogwarts Legacy is one fucking game. It's one game. Even if it's made by the most horrible transphobe ever, it's one fucking shitty WB ass game. And it's just so, it's so un unbelievably depressing. It's so incredibly depressing. And I can't help but feel like the people who are, who are reacting to this with an I told you so and treating people who supported the boycott poorly are equally to blame as the people who wasted so much time talking about the boycott. Uh, I have seen, I mean, God, like there was a fuck, like I, I've seen tweets from major, from big content creators that are just saying like trans people bullied Hassan and, and like just taking the conservative line and running with it. Because people told told Hassan that they wouldn't they didn't want him to play the game. And also, people like Hassan, for example, have been doing things like, I'm gonna do a Hogwarts legacy fundraiser, and then when which they know is gonna generate heat, obviously it's gonna generate heat. People feel very strongly about the game. That is the one thing that I think everybody can agree about. I don't think anybody can disagree that people feel strongly about Hogwarts Legacy. So you know you're gonna get heat if you do something like that. And then when you get the heat, you cancel the entire thing Instead of just giga chatting tr through and committing and doing a f charity fundraiser for H Hogwarts Legacy. <sighs> and then you just afterwards go, yeah, you know, uh, people just kept complaining about it and I didn't want to do it anymore. You knew people were going to complain. You chose to do a Hogwarts Legacy fundraiser. Giga Chad through. Have some principles. If you believe that it's good to do the charity, do the charity. It doesn't matter. This is the thing. Oh, God, it's so... Consumption as politics will be the death of us all. And unfortunately, it's winning. Consumption as politics is winning. Nobody giga chatted through this, except for me, obviously. Nobody has fucking giga chatted their way through this. Every single content creator has been a giant fucking whiny bitch baby about this entire thing. From hyper fixating on the pro, from hyper fixating on, on boycotting the game to freaking out and trying to be like a smug ass, I told you so, to blaming trans people for their own harassment. Guys, Jesse Gender did a video, okay? Jesse Gender. Jesse Gender is one of the content creators I think so highly of. Like, she is like one of the most diplomatic, chill, 
uh, in-depth, careful content creators out there. She's incredibly peacefully minded. She speaks her mind without being super, super aggressive. She's definitely better at that than I am. I get mad really easily and I start calling names. And Jesse Gender has been called some of the worst things I've ever seen. I've, I, I spent a lot of time last night watching people reacting to Jesse Gender. And I don't agree with Jesse Gender's takes on this. I watched Jesse Gender's video on my own before watching anybody's reactions to it. And there were a lot of arguments I just straight up didn't, just didn't agree with. But the people responding to her were being so fucking terrible to her. I just, like, I don't even agree with Jesse Gender's arguments, but Jesse Gender wasn't fucking being super toxic about it. This is not a workable, this is not a workable culture. The culture that we have online is not making any of you happy. It's certainly not making any of us happy. Content creators, their audiences, uh, colleagues in content creation spaces, it's not working. It's failing. It's dying. We are witnessing, it's like watching someone die of, of a, of a, of a, of like an advancing fever. I'm just sitting here and watching these social spaces tear each other apart for the for fucking Hogwarts legacy. I saw people saying that uh, Jesse, I saw, oh, of course, and of course, let's not even get started about what the conservatives have been saying about Jesse Gender. You guys don't know, you wanna know what the conservatives have been saying about me? And I haven't even talked about fucking Hogwarts legacy. The moment I put Hogwarts legacy in the title and I got three fucking uh, accounts come in immediately that had fucking slurs in their name. Saw people calling Jesse Gender condescending, which is ridiculous. I saw people call saying, uh, call using slurs like literally using transphobic slurs against Jesse Gender. That's one example of many. There have been tons of channels that have done the same thing. She got harassed by J.K. Rowling's audience. She's getting harassed by all the anti woke channels. And it makes me mad. It makes me mad that like lefties aren't meaningfully fighting against this. Like liberals are usually the people who are like all about consumption as politics and lefties are usually the ones who are saying stop fucking talking about Harry Potter legacy and let's talk about the, the fact that uh, every red state in the United States is trying to ban transgender health care. And that like three or four of them have already succeeded. That there are multiple states now where kids who happen to be trans cannot get the medical care that they need. And their doctors are in legal danger of being charged with felony crimes. We're not even having a good conversation about art. Like I said, art is my fucking life. I love it when people talk about media. I love it when people critique media. But this hasn't, this isn't even that. It's literally just a meta conversation. Everyone is trying to signal that they had the right take, the right take about Hogwarts legacy. It's, it sucks, okay? It fucking sucks. It fucking sucks. Nobody walked away from this looking like a Giga Chad. Uh, and I think that uh, the lack of charitability, the lack of ability to like even assume the basic, the basic like goodness of your own political allies uh, is, is fucking trash. I think that the lack of that is fucking pathetic. No, Arius, the sad truth, the sad, sad truth about all this is that even I don't really look like a Giga Chad. Because in the end, here I am talking about the fucking stupid game. The only point, the only consolation prize that I get out of any of this shit is that I waited. That I waited for the fucking hype to die down. The real truth is, uh... It makes me feel embarrassed. It makes me feel embarrassed that this is the best that we've got going on. That, that 
uh, this is the best we have to say for all of the effort of all of these different content creators that all that we can result in is an endless chain of harassment, the likes of which mostly falls onto the backs of trans of, of trans femmes in the public sphere. That that's it. That's what we got. That people choose to make the uh, the Hogwarts legacy the topic that everybody is obsessed with, and then afterwards, when that obviously doesn't succeed, because because you can't you can't like consumption as politics doesn't work. You can't buy your way out of a fucking heinously discriminatory imperial system of capitalism. You can't. Uh, buy the right game to fix that. It will never work that way. That's not how any of this works. And 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 when when that doesn't happen, all, all the knives all come out and people just start fucking carving each other up. And let's be a hundred percent real, okay? Uh, let me let me be a hundred percent real. Conservatives will forget about this in two days. Remember what was, do you remember what people, what the conservatives were talking about just before the Hogwarts legacy stuff really started picking up? Do you remember when they were fucking freaking out about the M&Ms and then the M&Ms canceled their mascots because they were tired of people fucking discoursing about them? Fucking M&Ms. Conservatives will turn everything into an anti-trans screed. Do you remember before that when the conservatives were were making the fucking Balenciaga nothing burger into an anti-trans, anti-groomer thing? The conservatives have already decided. None of this convinces conservatives. None of this does anything. Like the backlash against this is is inevitable. It doesn't matter what the topic is. Conservatives hate trans people. Donald Trump, just a couple of weeks ago, gave a fucking insane anti-trans speech. It wasn't because of Hogwarts legacy. They don't care. Every issue will be turned into something anti-trans. If it's not Hogwarts Legacy, it'll be the fucking green M&M. If it's not the green M&M, it'll be Mr. Potato Head. If it's not Mr. Potato Head, it'll be some other bullshit. There you have it. Hogwarts Legacy. Hogwarts Legacy. All of the pissing and shitting and farting and screaming and crying in the world and none of it made a difference. Nobody gained anything from this. Except for WB. WB made a whole lot of money, but they were going to do that anyway.